initial guideline, instead of actually cutting that sharp line in and working your way down, I would recommend actually just working your way up to create that line. You'll see me do that shortly. Um, and in terms of creating that line for this, because we're doing a mid fade, ball fade, I'm gonna work, keep in mind the, the amount of space that we're working with. He's a you know young kid, so he doesn't have a whole lot of space to work with. Um, I'm probably gonna be working about an inch over the ear, and I'm just gonna follow that line straight down, nice and natural, right underneath the occipital bone um, to start, okay? Um, this is my son, Zamar. He hasn't had a haircut for some, some time. Uh, if you can see this properly, we're gonna be doing something like that. So what that would be called a mid-ball fade. So I'm just gonna go and clean it up a little bit. Um, with the balding clippers, of course I can do this too, but because it's head small, uh, this just gives me like a nice little compact way to do it. And it just feels neat. As you can see the balding clipper, how powerful it is just because the motor, uh, that's why I like to use that initially, just save some time, okay? One thing I want to mention is, you know, for him, it's not it's not big of an issue, uh, especially after coming out of quarantine, you're going to have to be cleaning people's for a ball fade. Um, many times it extends way past where you think it should. So all this area here, the neck, all this is a part of the haircut. So keep that in mind. All right, so you can see that our first initial guideline is nice and even. We've got a nice, uh, strong line that we've created. Everything underneath that ball line is nice and smooth and, and bald. Uh, make sure with your reference points that your lines have good symmetry. Stand in front of your client, uh, use your mirror, whatever you need to do, use the facial features, whatever you need to do to make sure that you're working with nice, even lines. Next, I'm going to debulk some of this area here because we have a lot of hair that we're working with. I'm gonna use right now the Wall 1919. I like this one, it's a cordless. Um, this is the lever. When you bring it close, you're removing more hair. Open, you remove less, okay? So I have a number one guard on here right now just to help create a nice, good canvas from the bald line to our fade that's gonna be happening. So I'm just gonna debulk this area here. Go probably about an inch up with my number one guard. All right, so now I've transitioned to my number two guard and I'm gonna use my number two guard closed because you can obviously see there's a bit of a hedge here. I just wanna diffuse that a little bit. Uh, for our end look, I showed you the picture. So we are gonna have some volume and some height at the top and we're just gonna start, continue to work to make sure that we have a really good smooth canvas for the sides and back. All right, so we can see that we have uh, or on our way to make sure that we have a nice good foundation for a fade. I'm gonna use the clipper with an open lever. I'm gonna go about a half inch up all the way around to make sure that we have our nice zones to make sure that when we're ready to start fading them out, um, we have a good foundation for it.
All right, so now next step is with the number one guard with the lever closed, I'm going to go up another half inch. It's good to comb as you cut so you can kind of see what's happening. Uh, especially if you're working with hair that's very textured. Sometimes the waves or the curls can kind of throw you off so you have to really trust in the system. All right, we can see zone one, zone two, zone three. And I have the lever open just to go in some horizontal movement to kind of get this hedge a little bit off to make sure everything is nice and smooth before we start removing some of these hard lines. So I'm just doing a little bit of clipper over comb just to smoothen out this side area to make sure that we have a good tr smooth transition. Okay, so we've been erasing the bottom line, our first initial guideline. And in some areas it gets a little bit difficult. In the camera you may see it was very difficult for me to get it out here. Uh, take your, just keep our, our concentration on this line first. Um, you're probably seeing some demarcation there, we'll get rid of that in a minute. But just keep your, your attention to this line, which we're trying to diffuse. Uh, you can lift the skin, you could use the corners, whatever you need to do. Some areas will become a little bit more difficult. Uh, I've used the balding machine to create my initial guideline. Whatever you created your initial guideline with, that's what you could use to help you erase it. So right now I'm just using the clippers, it's a closed guard. But I'm gonna jump back to my, I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna jump back to my balding, um, wall machine. So if you use the outliner to do yours, uh, that's what you could probably use to help erase that line. Whatever you've created it with is what's gonna help you to remove it. So at this point now we're ready for the outline. Personally, I like to start right in the middle. It kind of gives me a nice place to start and then work my way out. You want to remember the reference points and um, know where you're going to bring your points to. And that's quite important. This is a really, really important part of the haircut as well. If while you're growing and perfecting your haircutting skills, um, for somebody who likes a really sharp outline, if you make some mistakes or it's not really as good as you want it to be on the sides, uh, they could be really forgiving if the, if the outline is really nice and sharp. And that's just, a, that's just a, ma a manner of understanding, seeing and visualizing what a straight line is, what a nice uh, angle is, and things like that, what a nice arch is. So all down here on the forehead, right in between the eyes, all of this is for me is a part of the haircut still. If you're going to be re removing hair in between here, maybe you want to, uh, talk to the person first with a little bit of a consultation. But any hair that you remove below your line is gonna help your line to look a lot more outstanding, okay? And his forehead is really close to his hairline. You wanna be careful that you are taking in consideration the full length of the blade. Many times you can be going and working with the corner your eyes is here and you're not really paying attention to what's happening here. I know a lot of people are wearing 
lines in their eyebrow. Uh, if it's intentional, that's one thing, but you don't want to be doing the corner of an outline and end up with a line right in the eyebrow. So keep your eyes on that as well. It's very, very important. So if you can see that I'm not holding it flush right down, I'm just working with the angle to make sure that I have a nice good line and I'm not affecting anything for the eye, eyebrow. And then you can also work this way. You can take a look at where this line is lining up to his eyebrow. We have probably have an inch on the corner. We wanna make sure that we, we have symmetry. All right, so here we have it. We've just done the finishing touches. We got some good symmetry, nice sharp lines. We have our fade all the way around, mid fade. And I'm just gonna use a bit of product and I'm gonna use the glove for some texture at the top. And we are all finished.